Yeah. Wow. The hot model in London. After this uh, freaky, useful phase, Cleopatra drifted down to Spain. Formentera, the early hippie, late beatnik scene in Formentera. You want a little peasant cottage in Formentera for five bucks a month. It was hashish coming in from Afghanistan and Lebanese blonde. And lots of naked blonde babe hippies. Well, um, in Spain, she scored minor acting roles in films, in film production. Films that eventually nobody ever really saw. Uh, uh. But, I mean, swinging with the film crowd was a, you know, turn on in itself. She turned on to... Uh, Marijuana. Hashish. Moroccan hashish. <clears throat> California LSD. Psychedelic music. She got like deep into Herman Hat. And through the E Ching all the time. Right now, Cleopatra is languidly drifting through the Dodecanesis, <laughs> Greek islands, for fun and to. You know, get into drifting hip, gorgeous, hippie, young princess. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she supports herself. She, she paints, uh, she goes to the beach, gets the smooth, uh, a wave wash smooth uh, pebbles, uh, paints them with wizards, rainbows, the peace sign, dolphins. Uh, then she super glues these pebbles onto inexpensive ring bases, which she buys, you know, a hundred at a time. And uh, like a uh, sultry, charismatic gypsy, she sells her rings to straight tourists in tavernas, uh, cafes, and on the beaches. She sets them all up. And she's so good looking. Her boyfriend named Snake. I mean her boyfriend until last night after that dramatic split up scene when she at two in the morning dark outside ran away with me. Mm. Yeah, that snake guy, huh? Mm. That British hunk. He used to be tall. He used to be handsome. Mm. As far as I, I know, he used to be on the Oxford rowing team And he used to speak and 
you know, read, write, and, and all that. Ancient Greek. And besides all that, he now reeks of ouzo, and it's abusive and violent, and loves to go to Rhodes town and provoke fights in the Tavernas. Snake did not pass the acid test. Cleopatra, I have a simple plan, proposal for us. Uh, what do you say we hang out on Sponge Island for a few weeks? That way we can smoke down our dwindling stash of hashish because we can't risk taking it to Turkey. Otherwise, To grab a bunch of money off us. They love hashies themselves. But you know, games nations play to fill their pockets. I wish I were more naive, but yeah. Cleopatra whispers, fine with me. I mean, she's an elder hippie. 30 years old. She's happy to slow down uh, drifting towards the Hashish Trail through the Dodec and these islands. Yeah, she's cool to wander with me wherever. I'm lustful. On the vegetable boat, produce boat, from Rhodes to Sponge Island, Cleo and I are, are the first non-Greeks to ever ride the boat. And that's only because Manolis Makronaitis saved us from snake and stowed us on the boat with some cousins, you know, Greek family trip. They just, Manolis put it on, uh, put, put us there, then it's just the way they, they stick together. Mm -hmm. uh, Cleo, you know, we're on a coil of rope next to a crates of watermelon. In fact, the boat is called the Carpusia which means watermelon. They're big on big watermelons. With all that sun, 300 days a year, and Elio's beaming down all that energy all the time. Watermelons just go nuts on roads. I mean, in fact, when Greeks go hunting, their dogs have evolved to chew through the rind of watermelon and eat the luscious red juicy interior to stay hydrated. I mean, they got watermelons coming out the ears. You know? All right. Well, yeah, she, she gets out her I Ching in her burgundy felt bag with the uh, gold thread twine string. Throws the three coins and Ass, you know, from the depths to the oracle. Is my destiny to be the insatiable lover of Earthman on Sponge Island? I perk up. Rhodes fading away. Like newlyweds, we cuddle under the sleeping bag 
where we are gently rocked by the waves into a blissful slumber beneath the canvas shading of the Carpusia. Island Greek, they just, this like smash into mush, the ends of the words. This is not Athenian Greek. You're gonna got, not gonna get no job up on the mainland with this kind of way of speaking. In Athens, if you want a watermelon, you say, Carpuza. Carpuza. I mean, neat, clean, get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. If you're in the islands, Carpuza becomes Carpuzia. Well, this island Greek is the Greek I learned. <laughs> I didn't read any books or anything, but just one day I was like uh, hitchhiking into Rhodestown and uh, a Greek offered me a cigarette and I said, then Kapnizos, I don't smoke. And uh, suddenly uh, it's all there, you know, it's all there. And, and Cleopatra speaks island peasant Greek also. So we are just so in, you know, with this part of, of Greece. They love it. We speak their own provincial Funky, mushy, <laughs> Carpuzia. You know what? Uh, uh, we're heading for Sponge Island, so I better like uh, 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 get get a heads up on like what what is it? I mean, where'd it come from? Sounds kind of squeezable in a certain way. Sponge Island is all about sponges sponge divers going way back until antiquity disappears in the mist. The spongers traded their expertise in all things spongy to the powerful conquerors around them throughout their history in exchange for freedom and self-rule on their small Dodecanese island. You know, it was like uh, in um, the 15th century, it was like an atom bomb dropped for the first time. It was that big of a thing. The atom bomb of the 15th century. And you know what that was? You know? It was when the Ottoman Turks dramatically seized Istanbul off the Byzantine Romans. You know, it'd be like the Kazakhstanis taking over Montana. Yeah, they got in Istanbul, and to do it, they dragged ships over a hill, you know, six six kilometers. They came in, they snuck in, you know, and they didn't sail right into Istanbul. They, they hid, they went around into a cult. They had spies, yeah, they had informants. They had like people give, giving up, everybody uh, treacherous. I mean, it made the Game of Thrones look like checkers, okay? We're talking three-dimensional Ottoman chess, yeah. Not only did they take Istanbul, and by the way, the Turks originally started out in China. They're Chinese. They are not Arabs at all. Don't call a Turk an Arab in this day and age. Probably shouldn't call them Chinese either. Yeah, first in Istanbul, then all the Greek islands, all of Greece, you know, you know, all the way, Baghdad, across northern Africa, then up 
you know, Gibraltar, Spain, all the way to like Budapest, Saudi Arabia, it all coming out of Istanbul, right? And they had been eyeing this St. John Crusader castle for centuries. And that's when Suleiman the Magnificent made his move in 1522. He overwhelmed. He actually rammed down uh, the doors like 14 feet thick doors and catapulted pitch. And, you know, his, if you like history, you know, the Battle of, of Suleiman taking Rose is classic. It went on for months. And finally, the Knights of St. John surrendered. Or, that's it. Uh, yeah, Suleiman, he wasn't a total badass. He told the Knights they could take their weapons, you know, their favorite swords and stuff. Their booze, too, because, you know, the Turks like catches. Uh, and, you know, you can ship out and ship out to Malta and uh, go kiss the ass of the Pope. If that turns you on. So, imagine the e intense excitement on Sponge Island when they learned that Suleiman the Magnificent himself with his royal turquoise silked out Chinese entourage was camping just across the water in Dhaka, it's like six kilometers away. You can see the minarets of Dhaka from Sponge. Um, the cunning Spongers appear before the tent of Suleiman the Magnificent. Because they could make him look even more fabulous with what they were bringing. Basket of Venus sponges. Let the, the adjective sink in for a moment. Basket of Venus. I mean, I want to get in that basket. Sponges. All right. The spongers returned to Sponge Island, less their tribute sponges, overjoyed to have negotiated the best amazing deal in the history of sponges. So for the next 500 years, protected by this Ottoman e edict, the spongers are free to die for sponges in this huge, huge part of the world with no hassles. They work the sponge beds throughout the Aegean Islands, plus the far reaches of the Ottoman Empire, including the sponge beds off Cyprus, Syria, Egypt, Tripoli, Duna, Algiers. And they even spaced out on sponges as far as the Canary Islands. And they had a golden age, peaking between 1880 and 1890. During this supremely absorbent decade, Sponge was en envied throughout Europe and Asia Minor as that wealthy island in the Mediterranean. <laughs> During this golden decade, Sponge Island was richer and more populous with its 30 
thousand spongers than its neighbor. Big shot passe rodos.